All right, so Alana is literally tropical sunshine in human form. She free dives, she mermaids, she's a scuba instructor. She's been on multiple episodes of Shark Week. She's worked with Samuel L. Jackson on the docu-series Enslaved. We're here to talk about Coral Vita, the coral restoration project she works with in the Bahamas. They literally supercharge the growth of coral reefs. She's gonna explain that. She's bohemian, she's a superhero. It's immediately evident that Alana is next level. And as always, if you wait to the end, I'll give you my opinion on something we talked about controversial. I hope you enjoy this interview with Alana. Here we go. All right, Alana, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Coral Vita. Okay, you're out of the Bahamas? Yes, so we're located in Grand Bahama. That's the one that's kind of shaped like this. Yep. <laughs> this is our high-tech map. <laughs> so what do you guys do? Coral Vita is the world's first land-based commercial coral farm for the restoration of reefs. That's a bit of a mouthful. So It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a land-based farm. So instead of your usual field nursery, that in-ocean coral tree configuration, we are land-based. So we are in tanks like this. Oh, that's cool. So land-based, commercial. We are a mission-driven company. So any profit that we do make from the ways and how we can restore reefs, it goes right back into reef restoration. But then of course, we're for the restoration of reefs because you can have land-based commercial coral farms, but they're for the aquarium trade. That's not us, that's not our beat, that's not what we do. We are strictly for reef restoration. How does it work? Our mission is to restore the world's dying coral reefs by growing corals up to, because it depends on the species, 50 times faster, while also working on bolstering their resilience against the effects that climate change is having on our oceans. So when you say 50 times faster, 50 times faster than like, say, if you dropped an artificial reef, like a shipwreck or something, like 50 times faster than natural growth? Yes, 50 okay. times faster than natural growth. And this is through a very simple process called microfragmentation. And this methodology was developed by amazing coral practitioners around the world, probably pioneered in the aquarium trade, but is now being used for faster and active reef restoration. So first we start off with actually surveying the reefs in the first place. Where are the reefs that are degraded? Now we have to narrow it down to what reefs can we actually restore? Once we figure that out, we get to work and we pick up what's called fragments of opportunity. These are fragments of coral that are broken off of larger colonies. So if I were to break your arm off and throw it over there. We're Sorry to interrupt. I'm going to be real quick. If you want to support this channel, go to sweetwaterscuba.com. Info's in the description. You can get the blue shirts, the red hat, the vinyl holographic tank stickers that everybody seems to love, and of course the autographed children's books that come directly from me. And back to the show. We're looking for Kenny's arms and legs that are scattered across. That's a very the violent example. It's just an educational <laughs> tool. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. So then we pick up those frags of op and then we bring them back to our farm. We could stash them in our field nursery for later. We do have coral trees, but they're kind of like our, our pantries or our extra storage so that we don't always have to go out and scout particularly branching corals. But most of them come back to our coral farm and then we put them through the process called microfragmentation, which is how we grow corals 50 times faster. So science has found that if you cut a coral, it triggers a rapid healing response in the same way that your body responds to when you accidentally scratch yourself. So all of these little microfrags here would be growing way faster than they would kind of left to their own devices, uncut and in the wild. So this is a natural process. We're just triggering that rapid growth. So then they're growing rapidly on these plugs that we make at the farm. That's 3D printed. These are the real ones. Oh, cool. They're made of a special mix of cement. Then we place them into coral cookies. This is the real one and this is the 3D printed example, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> if you place these microfragments across a surface relatively close to each other, eventually they will run into each other naturally, but they will recognize themselves, especially if I've done my job right and not mixed up any of the genotypes. They're genetically identical and they will fuse and become a coral, one organism and sharing resources kind of just like they did in the beginning. So going from the size of a quarter to the size of a saucer would take a fraction of the time it would take a coral in the wild to do that. This one, uh, for the listeners, is uh, about the size of maybe like a half of a grapefruit or an orange. How long would it take to get that size normally versus using this method? It does depend on the species, and I think most of your questions after this, my answer is going to be it depends, unfortunately. So the fastest growing corals can grow 12 to 15 centimeters a year. Okay. That's your branching corals, like a crop or a cervicornis or a staghorn coral, the one that looks like really scratchy fingers. 
or its sister species, elkhorn corals, obviously kind of looking like yeah. elk antlers. And the slowest ones, like these brain corals, maybe they only grow one to two centimeters a year. And then it depends on the individual. You and I probably have been the same height since eighth grade, whereas uh, Richie... <laughs> we couldn't resist another tall joke. <laughs> is, is very different. You Can you stand in between us yeah, to show the difference between... Yeah, come over here real quick. <laughs> Richie, you're on this one, buddy. I don't even know if he's going to fit in the frame. Yeah, he's Oh, there he is. So we're all the same species species of human but we have Jesus. we have very different growth rates and it's the I'm same for, for corals. This is just so humiliating. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But Thank I can you, say <laughs> that uh, acroporid corals, especially staghorn corals, can relatively quadruple in size in about six to nine months. So in about nine months this coral cookie can be completely covered and connected if it were staghorn coral, a quickly growing coral. So if you didn't know, we've lost 50% of global reefs. Since? In the last decade. In the last decade? Yep. Half the reefs? Half of global reefs are dead and gone. Oh shit. And if we choose to do I nothing know, about bad? it, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah. And if we choose to do nothing, we could lose up to 90% of reefs by the year 2050. And that's scary for all of us because we're probably going to be in our mid 50s, early 60s by the time 2050 rolls around. For me, I'm gonna be in my early 60s. Don't smirk at me like that. What happens if all the coral reefs die? If coral reefs die, our oceans die. Coral reefs are the most biodiverse ecosystem on this planet. And 25% of all marine creatures rely on reefs at some point in their life cycle. Whether that's to find food, find a mate, to rest if they're migratory, maybe that's just where they live. And then to really put that into perspective, reefs only equate to less than 1% of our seafloor. So 25% of all of the marine animals you could ever imagine in your brain of yours, thinking about finding Nemo and all the creatures, or your own experience in all those creatures, a quarter of all of marine species rely on less than 1% of a space on this planet. Do you think this is something that is reversible? Could this possibly save it? We're not saying that Coral Vita is a silver bullet by any means. We still need, you know, governments and people like you and me to advocate for our oceans because we need to fix or begin to slow first and then reverse everything that we've done to our oceans. But what we're doing at Coral Vita is kind of like a fragment of opportunity. We're laying down that initial foundation, that scalable foundation to really create scalable impact because 90% by 2050 is a big challenge. And so we're doing what we can to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's a huge problem. Is there some like simple thing somebody that's listening could just do right now to help without sounding like a children's <laughs> special? <laughs> no. Like recycle, you know, like something I mean, that yeah, maybe people though. haven't thought of that they could do. Divers, people that are out there, a small little thing. I guess firstly is realize and remember that it's not all your fault, that you can't take this on by yourself, that we're not asking you to drop off your, I don't know, your Honda Accord and then go pick up a, a Prius or an electric car. You a know, horse. there are big no. <laughs> Our horse. That <laughs> right, could be fun. <laughs> Well, we want to help you. How does somebody help Coral Vita? Is there a volunteer program? Is there employment? How, do, how does somebody get involved? At the moment, one way that you can actively help us out is by adopting a coral. You can go on our website, coralvita.co slash adopt a coral, and you can adopt your very own microfragment, even a fusion cookie. If you're a big corporation or just feeling super generous, you can even donate to adopt a whole tank of corals. And that donation will go from collecting a coral to fragging coral, it growing and living its best life in our tanks, and then being <laughs> outplanted back to the reef to bring the reefs back to the splendor and what they used to be. What does that mean, adopt a coral? Adopting a coral would be to donate at whatever tier you'd like to our organization and towards our efforts. So we you don't actually, get one. No. no Where kidding. were you going to put it? <laughs> I don't know. Even if you had a saltwater aquarium, <laughs> I could get locked up for exporting corals. <laughs> oh my God, is it really? <laughs> yeah, no, it's illegal to harvest corals without a permit, and our permit does not say we can actually physically sell corals. That is not what we do. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's digital, and so it's very environmentally friendly, and it's kind of that gift for that person who you can't really figure out what to gift. But we do send you kind of monthly updates on what your coral is up to when you adopt it. So your coral has been collected, it's been fragged, it's 
hanging out in our tanks and living its best <laughs> life for a little while. It's been outplanted and kind of take you through that process. Can you name them? You can name them. You can put their name on your gift certificate. What do you want to name your coral? Really? What do you want to name it? What do I want to name it? Yeah. Oh gosh, I don't Here. know. I didn't expect to is. be in the spot. Name your, there he is. Name your coral. <sighs> Steve Z. Steve Z, cool. Yeah. You can put Steve Z right. on the certificate. Yeah, how about Steve Z? <laughs> is there an opinion that you started with that has done a 180 to now? That for-profit companies, when done right, do good. That we're not always the bad guy. Coral Vita is an open source and very collaborative company. We want to work with anyone who wants to help us restore reefs. We work with the Reef Rescue Network, the government of the Bahamas, with Perry Institute for Marine Science. We've even given talks to the Coral Restoration Foundation out in Florida. It's going to take the effort of all of us to even start to begin to make sure that 90% of reefs do not die by 2050. I usually worked in the nonprofit sector. And this gotcha. is my first time working in a private for-profit company. And I felt a little guilty in the beginning because it felt like I was going over to the dark side. It's not at all. It's actually a little freeing when compared to the nonprofit world. When but, done right. Correct. And what would you, I know it's probably a whole conversation, but sure. what does that mean done right? Coral Vita was founded by Sam Teicher and Gator Halpern. Officially, they're my bosses, but they're also my really good friends. And I know that they are good people. And I know and understand that they are building this company not for themselves, but for us Bahamians to benefit from, to serve this entire country. It's for our community. And the goal is not to keep it in the Bahamas. The goal is to have a global network of these high tech coal farms because reefs dying is not a problem that's exclusive to the Bahamas. It's worldwide. And so we need scalable solutions across the planet to really make sure that we are doing our very best to ensure that reefs don't end up in the state that they're predicted to. So when you're not out there raising coral, you're not filming for Shark Week, <laughs> you're not just existing in the Bahamas where we all wish we could, Yeah. <laughs> you're not diving. What are you doing for fun? Does free diving count? <laughs> oh, can't be this stuff. What do you do just for fun when it's a rainy day and you're not working? Like, is is where is that? What does that look like? I'm super cozy on my couch with my dog, my boyfriend if he's not at the gym, and I play video games on the Switch. <laughs> oh, a little video game action. Okay, yeah. that's what we we're looking for. Clearly, all I right. love all the Mario's, <laughs> but I'm a big fan of, of puzzle games. They're strategy games on the Switch. How about Mario Kart? <laughs> Oh, kick your ass in Mario Kart I doubt any that. day. I doubt I that. I wish I brought my Switch. I kick I, your butt right now. I doubt now. that. Swear. Unless Tina's uh -uh. there because she cheats. I swear to Bob. She practices during the week and pretends like she didn't. He's just really bad. It's yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no, that's right. what I'm saying. I swear to Bob, I kick his butt. What ca what cart, what character? Those are the last questions. <laughs> Toad, the pipe cart, and like the multicolor, like rainbow parachute. Yeah, kick your ass. Yeah, I don't think so. But <laughs> Alana, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. This has been fun. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with Alana. We haven't played Mario Kart yet, but we all know how it's gonna end. As promised, I said I'd give you my opinion on something we talked about controversial during the interview. I think I just agree with Alana with for-profit companies aren't always bad. I mean, I've had a dive shop. I try to do everything I could. I have friends that have ran non-profits and you know, they still actually have to make money and then they're restricted and weren't actually able to accomplish some of their goals. So I think with anything in life, there's good people and bad people. Whether it's a non-profit or a for-profit, I think we shouldn't just just say, oh, that's a nonprofit. They're the good guys. Oh, that's a regular company. They're the bad guys. I think take every person, every organization on its merits. I think that was a great perspective. Coral Vita is a perfect example of that. Feel free to comment about that or anything you wanted to know about this in the comments. Agree or disagree. I love you. I'm glad you're here. We'll see you on the next show.